Waycross presents an election forum for member of council for the City of Forest Park. There are five candidates running for four open seats. The candidates are in alphabetical order, Trevina Adams, Rosalind Moore, Chelsea Nuss Clark, Terrence A. Harrison, Matthew Robinson. Welcome to this Waycross Election Forum. This forum is for Forest Park City Council. I'm Dana Gagnon, Government Programming Coordinator for Waycross Community Media. And we have three candidates here in the studio. We have Terrence Harrison, we have Rosalind Moore, and we have Chelsea Ness Clark. Thank you so much for coming to the studio today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Matthew Robinson and Trevina Adams were both invited to participate. They did not respond. Now, we're going to start with your two-minute opening statements. But before we do that, I would like to just take a moment to let the <coughs> viewers know that if you are watching this program live on October 6th, you can be part of the program. You can email your question for the candidates to me here in the studio, and I will get them here on my magical device, and I can ask the candidates your questions for you. So if you are watching this program live on October 6th, the email address is live at waycross.org. Now, here are the rules for questions. You must be a Forest Park resident to ask a question. So when you send me your email, please include your name and your Forest Park street. Now, I'm not going to say your last name or your street address on the air. It's just how we make sure that the questions for Forest Park candidates are coming from actual Forest Park residents. Um, questions must be phrased for all the candidates, not targeted at just one candidate. So that being said, let's get started with our two minute opening statements. And uh, Mr. Harrison, let's start with you. Thank you, Dana. Oh, good, good afternoon or good evening. My name is Terrence A. Harrison and I've lived in Forest Park since 1978. And I am a proud recipient, or excuse me, a proud graduate of the Green Hills Forest Park School District. In fact, I graduated from Forest Park High School in 1989. I'm an individual who believes that the city of Forest Park is an inviting, diverse, progressive community, and that a strong personal leader will continue to make our city a destination for those who desire a safe place to raise a family. So what drives me is a sense of community that is, and I currently sit on a board called, edu of, excuse me, of an organization called Education Matters, which is located in Lower Price Hill. And that organization serves those residents of Lower Price Hill and beyond for those who are looking to obtain their GED or just looking for help just to help them in their economic situation. I'm a proud member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I also am a life member of the VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars. And I have been in the Army Reserves for over 32 years and I currently still serve. Um, professionally, I work as the Veterans Programs and Services Manager at the University of Cincinnati. I have both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in criminal justice. My bachelor's is from Northern Kentucky University, and my master's is from the University of Cincinnati. And I also have a, a, a certificate in higher education leadership from the University of Cincinnati. So that's Terrence A. Harrison in a nutshell. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Dr. Moore, we are going to reset our timer. And now we're ready for your opening statement. Thank you, Dana. Good evening. I'm Dr. Rosalind Moore, and I've been a resident of Forest Park for 27 years. Currently, I serve as second vice mayor for the city of Forest Park. I am a visionary leader. I'm a retired major in the United States Army with 21 years of service to my country and 25 years of service to the residents of Forest Park. I take great pride in my partnership with our school district our faith-based community, our businesses, and residents. I'm a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. As a visionary leader, I'm advocating to position Forest Park for 2030 and 2050 and beyond. This includes innovation, mobility of our residents and our seniors. It involves economic growth, improving quality of life, social determinants of health to make Forest Park a great place to play, work, and live. I'm a proud of our community. Based on our 2020 census, we are now the second largest city in Hamilton County. 
we have 20,189 residents. That's a 14% increase since our last census in 2010. We are growing Forest Park with new families, so we need to advocate for improvement in our infrastructure, our community spaces, mobility throughout our community, and outside our borders. Street repairs, entertainment to keep residents in Forest Park. I take great pride with my commitment and my time and my dedication to the residents of the city of Forest Park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Ms. Clark, are you ready for your two minute opening? <laughs> I am, thank you. Thank you so much, Dana, and Waycross Media for having this forum. Uh, my name is Chelsea Ness Clark. I'm a current councilwoman on the city of Forest Park. I've also been a resident here for almost 13 years. I am a business owner of a STEM lab because there was not enough access for minorities and girls for high quality science, tech, engineering, and math education. Uh, so that work has transcended um, amongst many, many communities uh, throughout Hamilton County. I'm a single mother of two teenagers, and I am a precinct executive as well. I grew up in a very strong UAW family, and so those uh, values and the grit and the perseverance, I hold those to this day, and that is the reason for the advocacy that I've done in helping break down barriers for Ohio families, and particularly families here. Uh, I'm the only candidate endorsed by the Hamilton County Democratic Party, as well as the Cincinnati Women's Political Caucus. And why is that? That is because I'm not just a visionary leader, but I have proven I can leverage partnerships throughout the county to get things done. Uh, as, as the vice chair of the Economic Development Commission, I've started our city's uh, minority business initiative to make sure that we've got an infrastructure so that those businesses have the tools they need to get ahead. Uh, like the new Hamilton County Regional uh, Library, in collaboration with so many partners, we've been able to get that off the ground and now we will have our new regional uh, library to help with quality of life. When the pandemic hit, our city was in need. And so I sprung into action and, and created partnerships with our faith, community, and restaurants and partnered with the Free Store Food Bank to feed over 2,400 people from May through August. If you want representation that's responsive, that has a passion for civic leadership and a business acumen in order to leverage those countywide partnerships, irrespective of, the, irrespective of the board that they're in, then I'm certainly your candidate and would be honored to serve this city some more. Thank you so much. Well, now that you have heard everyone's two minute opening statement, now is a great time if you are watching this live on October 6th to send in your questions for the candidates. You can email them to me right here in the studio, live at waycross.org, and I'll get them right here, and I can ask the candidates your question. Um, in the meantime, though, I want to start with a question of my own. Um, I'm going to start with Dr. Moore this okay. time, and we'll have two minutes for this okay. question, too. And I would like to know what you think are the top three issues that is that are facing Forest Park right now. I know we hear a lot of different things at the meetings, so let's boil it down to what you feel the top three are. So I think the top three issues that our residents are concerned with are taxes, and that's something that we're looking at. Um, the other uh, uh, topic is quality of, of life. Um, we are currently, um, council is looking at uh, a, count, a quality of life committee to address some of those concerns. I think the other thing that uh, are concerned about the community um, space, a common space, and I have been advocating for that. Um, Councilwoman Nuss mentioned the library. Um, I was very instrumental in starting the conversation with the library and connecting uh, partnerships. Um, and so as a result of that, we're gonna get a state of the art 25,000 feet library um, in our community. And that took a lot of advocating a lot of connecting resources and um, educating them on the city of Cincinnati and our residents as they deserve new buildings, new spaces, new common places to come together. So I think that kind of helps with that um, concern that the residents need a common space to come together. And I'm very proud of my team who really worked hard to bring that library um, to our community. Um, and that was a vision that I had as I was um, traveling to other communities. And I said Forest Park deserves a library. And um, I, I'm just so happy and proud Thank you. 
And now I'm going to pause. Um, uh, if viewers are wondering if that two minutes wrapped up really fast, I held up the wrong okay. cue card for the candidates. <laughs> yes. I have cue cards. You're not seeing them, but just now you have a little behind the scenes peek here. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, that cut one more minute. You got to give me one. Um, go ahead if you want to take another minute to answer okay. that, and then you'll all actually have two minutes to answer this okay. question. <laughs> Going back to quality sure. of life, um, we have an initiative called We Thrive with the Hamilton Public Health Department, and that started um, several years ago where um, our assistant uh, chief, Jermaine Hill, and our chief, Afi Jones, they have a vision of making Forest Park healthier. And as a um, liaison for council, I take great pride in uh, providing service, doing blood pressure screenings. Um, we wrote a grant for $15,000 and that jump start that. We also um, uh, I met with Interact for Health. They gave us another $25,000. So getting out in the community and partnering with other services to bring services to our community. Um, and We Thrive is doing great things in our community. They're real respected. Um, we have community partners and um, it's just improving the quality of life in our community and that was one of my platforms when I ran four years ago. As a psychiatric nurse practitioner um, and a public health nurse, I, I feel that um, healthcare is um, instrumental in making sure that our community is healthy and thriving and so I'm very proud of that initiative and all the time and the commitment that I have put towards um, being a part of that team, uh, the We Thrive team and um, we've made a lot of great uh, progress for our community. Okay, thank you. And I apologize for that, breaking that up. So, I've got the cards in the right order for you now. <laughs> um, and go ahead and I'll, ref I'll ask the question again because it's been so long now. What do you think the top three issues facing Forest Park today are? Thank you so much. Um, so, yes, taxes continue to be um, somewhat of a um, a main topic and one way that uh, we have to you know kind of position ourselves as we um, are continuing to try to make determinations on how we um, how we can go about its reduction is making sure that we do have a lot of quality of life opportunities for our residents uh, I'm the only one on council that has two young children <laughs> and um, and as a single parent you know we really rely on a lot of our services and our community spaces um, so when it came um, about that the that the library was going to embark on a project that was countywide, um, that went to a vote, of course, and it, it got approved. And so we were all too excited to get on board and help that collaboration and start that ideation proce process and brainstorming. And what we did was say, hey, these are the things that our community needs, specifically when it comes to our students. I'm an educator. I own an education company. Um, making sure that we've got extraordinarily strong and clear pathways so that when our students are graduating high school, they don't have to leave. Um, we are growing, but we're growing, you know, a little bit underneath what we really should. Um, Forest Park is an absolute gem of the city. We're positioned amazing geographically. And so that would be the third prong is making sure that um, we've got some, some very um, structured pathways for our students and that'll also bleed into of course economic development and what that looks like for our business communities and making sure that the corridors and entryways we have to Forest Park are really resembling the beauty and the vision that we, that we see in the coming years. Okay, great, thank you. And as I get this ready for you, um, what would you say Mr. Harrison are the top three issues? Thank you, Dana. Um, for me, I, I, I'm going to take a, a different path. So, in speaking with some of our residents, just by walking around the neighborhood and asking them, like, hey, what do you want to see in your city? Uh, what do you expect out of your council? One of the things I heard most was public safety, and which really caught my ear since I was a, a criminal justice major. And really, my goal is to be working with our public safety because I think we have a very good public safety uh, crew in Forest Park police, fire, uh, first responders, and whatnot. And just walking some of our neighborhoods, I, I talked to a constituent, and she was saying, like, maybe having, um, like, a, a, a walkabout, walkway down Southland Boulevard, just south of uh, Sharon Road, um, streetlights, right, on, on Kristen Place. Um, just little things like that, just so our residents feel safe. 
not to say that Forest Park is not a safe city. I think it's a very safe city, and I think our police department's done a very good job in keeping the crime down. Um, we had a constituent saying that, hey, maybe more of a police presence in her neighborhood down by, by the D section. Uh, second would be economic development. We keep hearing about taxes, and I've lived here just about all my life, and, and we can spur more economic improvements in this city. I think with our proximity to 275 and plus we're on the bus line to number 20 um, for businesses looking to start or expand a business, I think Forest Park would be an awesome place to have your business here. And finally, quality of life. Um, growing up here, I can remember a time where they had parades, um, not just for homecoming, but maybe to start off the Little League season. Mm -hmm. um, some of our constituents talked about like, hey, maybe a park or a um, community center or whatnot. So. I would hope that we can get those issues brought to the table and, and show our residents like, hey, we heard your cries, we heard your pleas, we're making, working to make things happen. That's great, thank you. Okay, well, let's go on. I am gonna remind if you're watching live on October 6th, you can email me questions in the studio. I will get them right here. I can ask the candidates. Uh, that's live at waycross.org if you want to email that works on October 6 now let's and we're gonna start with you um, Ms. Clark so we no, will uh, our next question will also do two minutes um, I want to ask all of you what is unique about each of your skills and experience um, that you bring to this council because, um, of course, everyone has a different background and the different mm -hmm. skills, and that's what makes such a um, broadly skilled c council. Um, and we'll start with you. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, that's an excellent question, one that we usually don't get, uh, okay. so very much appreciated. Uh, so my background, I um, graduated from Miami University, uh, studied business and political science there, got my bachelor's, um, came here, and then operated as a financial analyst for about seven years, so handling um, you know, investment vehicles, uh, retirement assets, et cetera, mutual funds. Uh, and then I um, went on to um, Mendoza College of Business through Notre Dame, their business college, and uh, received my executive certification in business and econ. So uh, I bring a lot of um, those business um, those business skills. So a lot of times the lens um, that I'm looking through things are similar in fashion. Um, as a business owner, I look at what does what's the input coming in and what is the expected output. I know that if if we want to have an infrastructure that um, that really propels us further into the 21st century. I know that that's going to be dependent on um, what relationships we have with our school district and how we can best support them with resources and the existing uh, workforce community that we have. So those things are um, very much important, as well as being able to have a lot of interpersonal communication skills. So throughout um, the county, I'm also a uh, trustee on SORTA and um, the uh, Suburbs Consortium Board. And those things, having those conversations throughout the county helped to make, um, to create partnerships and collaboration. I had a meeting uh, earlier today with Local 265 Union. So trying to bring them back to Forest Park to really create a vibrant infrastructure for our young people that are leaving high school that don't, that may not want to go into a university but can get excellent careers in trades. Those things are extremely valuable and they help position your city so that you're not being left behind, but that you are right where you're supposed to be and getting the resources that you need. And a lot of times since we're on the verge of Hamilton County, we don't always get those things. Excellent, and that's exactly your time. Thank you. Um, let us set this and go ahead and now your turn. Thank you. Um, I think what I bring to the table is maybe more so of a global view. Um, in my travels with the military, I've been to several different countries serving the United States Army and the people of the United States and countries including Ecuador, mm -hmm. Panama, Germany, Cameroon, West Africa, Kuwait, and Iraq. So in dealing with citizens of those countries and being a representative of the United States, I'm trying to bring something to them that they may not have seen, that you know they might have seen or heard something on TV or radio, what paints us as, okay, all Americans act like this or and whatnot, whereas, you know, that was further from the truth. So the experiences I bring there, I can bring here to the city of Forest Park because, as I said before, Forest Park is a very inviting, diverse community. 
I have neighbors from uh, Senegal. I have neighbors from Guatemala and Mexico. Um, we have businesses from um, individuals who live um, in, in, in Bhutan or you know places like that in near India. So I would think that I could bring a global point of view uh, to this council. Um, second, I also believe too that um, my current employer, I do work with individuals in the political realm. Okay, so, and I don't care what side of the aisle, they identify as Democrat, Republican, or um, Independent. I work with them because we all have a common goal. And I'd like to bring that to here, not only for the residents of Forest Park, but even in uh, county and state government. So like, hey, how can we work together for the betterment of our residents? Thank you. Excellent. And Dr. Moore. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Harrison, thank you for your service to our country. Thank you for um, Terrence and I both served in the Army together, so we have a certain skill set that we've been taught over our career. Um, and so together, I think we have about 55 years of service yes. to our country. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you again for your service. So being saying that, um, accountability, dependability, strategic planning, um, being an um, officer in the military, um, we, um, we plan for um, missions, and so we have to have a strategic vision. Um, also, um, I uh, graduated from the University of Cincinnati with a bachelor's in nursing. I went on and got my master's um, in uh, nursing uh, from Grand Canyon University, and then I got my doctorate in nursing from Xavier University, um, Cincinnati, Ohio in population leadership. And so I bring a skill set of um, being able to coordinate, thank you, um, being able to coordinate. Um, I bring that, that global view, um, as Mr. Harrison said, um, working for my, um, I also work um, for a local university and a local health department. And so traveling the world um, for, for my, um, uh, profession has given me a global view as well and embracing diversity. Um, I also do a lot of partnership with um, Forest Chapel, who has a, a diverse uh, population. Um, and so just making sure that the residents are um, welcome, welcome to our community. Um, they're a part of our community and they're engaged in our community. And so um, that's what I kind of bring um, that skill set. And I also like to see the big picture. And as I mentioned before, I am a visionary leader. And so um, I'm just very, very excited how we're positioned um, in the county, being the second largest city. Um, and um, so I, I look forward to um, um, the candidates um, um, honoring me at the polls and, and getting me reelected. Excellent. Well, well thank you. Um, so we've done a few kind of um, overarching introduct who are you mm -hmm. um, kind of questions. Um, I want to change direction a little bit. One of the things that's already come up is economic development, um, bringing businesses to Forest Park, keeping businesses in Forest Park. Um, so I will ask, and we will start with Mr. Harrison this time. Okay. Um, and I will make this a three minute, um, because I know it's hard to get an answer in sometimes, um, question. Um, and what I wanna ask is what can Forest Park do to keep businesses? Um, but I'll say that if there's things you already are doing, some of you are already on the council, mm -hmm. um, then you can address that too. Um, so we will start with you and what can Forest Park do to keep businesses? Yeah, thank you very much. I, I believe, and I'm speaking for self, it, it's just really just highlighting the attractiveness of Forest Park. And you say like, okay, why not Forest Park? You know, we take other communities to um, start businesses, raise families and whatnot, but really selling Forest Park and what, you know, we bring to the table. As I said earlier, um, based on our proximity to 275, I think Forest Park has a way, it's easy, um, act, you know, entrance and, and egress to get to and from the um, interstate. Um, but really just positioning those businesses probably on the, on the, on the bus line for those who have, um, you know, vehicle challenges, right? If they don't have a vehicle to get to work, maybe the bus can bring them to work. Um, and, and also, too, working with these exist, existing businesses, like, hey, you know, what can we do? You know, how can we help you uh, spur growth? What do you need from us? 
as council members? What do you need from us as citizens to patronize your business? Or what do we need to help grow your business? So really, I'm thinking that really just promoting Forest Park and what we have to bring to the table and where we're located, right? There's, there's several neighborhoods that we're close by, but really just using our um, access to 275 to really sell the, you know, to our business owners or um, existing businesses, like, hey, this is where you want to be. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Dr. Moore, what would you do to keep businesses in Forest Park? Thank you. Some of the things that we're doing currently is incentives um, for businesses to grow. A lot of times our businesses come into Forest Park, they're small, family owned, and so this giving them incentives tips to continue to grow and to stay in our community. Um, also reaching outside our borders, you know, um, looking at global companies, enticing them to come to our community, um, ex um, um, educating them on how diverse our community is. Also looking at how we use our land. Um, we are kind of landlocked in our community and so we have to think differently. So we have to build up because we don't have the space to build out. So looking at mixed use properties like apartments on the top, maybe retail at the bottom. So different ways of bringing businesses and more families into our community. And Ms. Nuss Clark. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I'm the vice chair of our Economic Development Commission and have been since, uh, actually prior to me um, being elected initially to city council uh, because I do believe that economic development is really where it is in terms of helping your city and its positioning be vibrant and be competitive. Um, so with us being the second largest city um, now, that didn't just happen overnight. It took some time and it took some work. Um, one thing um, that we've been able to do is that library. Um, we are talking about a $10 million next gen, um, building a new next gen facility. Um, just that facility and its infrastructure alone creates jobs um, and it expands our space and quality of life for our families. Um, the city, in order to get such a deal like that to go through, uh, we also had to look at how do we utilize the existing land that we have in order to complement what they're doing so that it will entice them. So what we did was is we were able to create a land swap deal um, for that project to go through. You have to be a really visionary leader in order to get those things done to make sure that you can support those efforts and make it so that your businesses that want to expand or are considering our city, that you've got, you know, that you've got um, packages that, that look um, inviting to them and that you're going to grow with them and that you're making a commitment to them. Um, we've been reinvesting in what's called Ready. Um, Ready has served us very well. We are seeing more businesses come into Forest Park. Um, we've been able to retain over $20 million in business. Um, and that's not to mention all the folks that that's keeping. You're talking over 5,000 jobs that we're being able to um, retain because of the work that the Economic Development Commission has done. Um, you look at Kroger through Phillips Edison, we had to push that thing to get through so that we could get that area uh, revitalized. Um, Northland Development, um, we were able to make that happen, and then the promenade. Um, and that really brings me down to minority business development. Forest Park, Park is extremely unique. We've got over 31 languages spoken in our school district alone. We are very diverse, the most diverse, and so I saw a need for there to be a platform that was completely equitable and inclusive for our minority women and veteran owned companies. And so launch that initiative and we've been able to bring mortar, which has been not only nationally recognized, but been able to dump or invest over $20,000 in the work in education and resources and capital for um, our business owners here. And that's just the beginning. I envision a tech hub for young minorities. I envision entrepreneurship startups, and we could be the leader in greater Cincinnati because of our geographic location. These things and much more can happen, um, but it does require those supports and understanding um, how that fits into the, you know, into our overall work here in Forest Park. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, while we are talking about economic development, 
Um, I think a lot of the residents that are watching can picture <laughs> what the city has been doing on Northland Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can, you can visually you can see a see difference it. from what that looked like just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what would be your suggestion for the next target space? Um, we've seen it happen in Northland, mm -hmm. so we're excited about it now. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as looking at the whole area of Forest Park, um, this time we are going to start with Dr. Moore. Okay. Uh, where would you put uh, this, uh, this uh, honestly, I think a one minute question. <laughs> where Thank would you. you put this next? So um, we, we recently discussed Northland, but we just purchased the property, property right next to the post office. So that property belongs to us. So um, we're excited about that purchase. Also looking at the OK marks off of um, Hamilton Avenue, that's a wonderful space. Um, and so those are the two areas that um, we um, could um, spark economic growth in our community. And so, yes, yeah, so we're excited about that purchase and we're hoping that um, um, we're still having conversations about that, how it's gonna be developed. But that was a big, that was a big purchase for our community. It's all exciting. That's why I figure out. I ask, where would you, you know, if, if you're, when you're making these decisions, mm -hmm. um, Ms. Nuss Clark. Absolutely. Um, so, a lot of um, a lot of these wonderful things happen, um, not just by um, you know through council, of course, but also in the direction and leadership of our city manager. Um, so, when Mayor um, Johnson had myself um, and Councilman at the time Wendell Burns lead the the search, um, which was a national search for our new city manager. What we really, really wanted collectively was someone that was going to be aggressive, dogged, and very passionate about community development and wanting to go after things. Um, the space over on Hamilton is especially nice. You've got a lot of green space. So what we need is we need a extended development for, um, for um, uh, single family homes that would be one story, uh, that would be accommodating elderly people and it needs to be a more walkable community so having um, not only park space but also having restaurants and small eateries and things making it a little bit more outdoor um, and walkable would be would be a great vision for that for that uh, entryway yeah. and mr. Harrison where would you like to see it and thank you very much yeah, the space on Hamilton and Waycross is a you know, very beautiful, attractive space. Yes, I'm that old to remember when the Kmart was there and it was very <laughs> viable and, yes. and very busy. Yes. Um, but that's just one. Um, you also have, uh, I can envision, um, different spaces in the promenade. Um, I, I know there's just a handful of businesses left. And once again, as I said earlier, just with the proximity to 275, and plus it's on the bus line, where you could put some type of small startup business there, you could put some type of restaurant or um, a craft brewery or something like that mm -hmm. in that type of space. Because what are we trying to do to attract people? What are we trying to do to attract families to Forest Park? And if we think outside the box, those might be the keys to bring those families in. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Now let's, we do a few more questions, but before I go any further, I do want to take a brief moment and uh, let the viewers know, if you are tuning in on October 6th, while we're doing this program live, you can actually be part of the program. You can send me in your question for the candidates. I have an iPad right here <laughs> in the studio, which means I'll get your question right here, and I can ask them the question so you will be ready to cast your vote. Um, the email to do that, if it is October 6th, is mm -hmm. live at waycross.org, and then you can be part of this program too. Um, now, my next question, we are going to start with Ms. Nuss Clark, and I wanted to, uh, we've, you know, we've talked about the census already. Mm -hmm. um, Forest Park went from being the third biggest city in the county to the second. That's exciting. Um, so that kind of answers a little of this question means some of this might, might be happening already, but um, how can the city continue to attract families? Because that's something that we talked about attracting businesses, mm -hmm. but that's only part of the demographics. So uh, this will be a two-minute question, and I will start with you. Mm, thank you. 
Uh, we have talked about this new regional branch library, I know. Um, but the reason we talk about that is because what it does. So let me tell you a little bit about what it's going to have in it. Uh, we are going to have STEM, which is my favorite, uh, and maker space, um, space where kids can have hands-on um, opportunities, a space where community folks can gather and meet. Um, we are going to have it bleed into outdoor space, so um, there's different types of exercise and things that are going to be able to happen there. But the reason that I'm especially um, proud and excited about that work that we've been able to accomplish with that partnership is because I believe that um, through through the work that we're doing in economic development and the grants that we are seeking, we are going to be able to leverage and create multiple public-private partnerships for that space. The space that we're talking about is adjacent to the current library, so that open space where the activity center used to be. We are going to be able to expand and we are going to be able to truly have a hub that is community-centered um, and that is going to be a huge draw um, for families coming to our city. Um, also making sure that we We've got, you know, we've got a lot of parks as it is. We've got beautiful outdoor spaces, and it'd be great. We just bought a stage, and so we do need to be able to have, you know, more concerts on the green, so to speak, and, and outdoor opportunities mm -hmm. and offerings that last the entire summer that are free that parents and families can, um, can experience and enjoy. Uh, we also um, have our energy electric aggregation that, that we passed, and I'm really happy about, about that as well because that is lowering, um, you know, lowering those bills for our residents going into that, um, going into that grouping. So between those two things, um, that is where we're going to see a lot of this pull. We've got a little bit of a marketing challenge as well. And so one of the things we need to do is set that strategy very, very clear and then create a marketing campaign so that we are drawing and bringing people to Forest Park and they know exactly what they're going to get and where we're headed. Excellent, thank you. Okay, now we are going to come to this end of the table and it is your chance to answer the same question. Okay. <coughs> All right, well, thank you very much. Um, really to bring families in, I, I, I go back to my experience in the military and I think diversity is the key. Um, one of the great things about growing up, growing up in Forest Park um, in the 1970s and 80s about how diverse it was before diversity was even a word. And really, even speaking with some of my uh, classmates um, 30 plus years later when we were in school, we look at that and, and it's hard to explain to people like how everything, what, what, everything was so inclusive. Everything was so, I say right down the middle, but really people learn how to get along despite our differences. And really, if we can highlight that, and this is for all families, um, you know, based on um, however family dyna dynamics are, we want them to know, like, hey, you can raise a family in Forest Park, working with our school district. We have two beautiful new schools mm -hmm. that we're attracting people to. I haven't taken a tour yet. Uh, my son's in at the South Building, but still, I like to say, like, we got two brand new beautiful buildings that, like, hey, you know, we're on our way up, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll also to to um, bring our families, it's just really just those small things, just quality of life things, right? So just speaking with, with the gentleman, he said like, you know, how come we can't have a dog waste station mm -hmm. at the end of our streets, right? Because he's starting to see more and more people walking their dogs or walking their families. So once again, if a stranger were to come to Forest Park and just see what they have, they might be inclined to move out here. So that's what I would like to champion and highlight on bringing families to Forest Park and keeping them in Forest Park. Dr. Moore, what would you do to bring families to Forest Park? I think the main thing is we're looking at things that entice families and individuals and businesses to come to Forest Park. And you have to look at social determinants of health. And so that's a, a, a terminology that we use to look at the community big picture. That includes economic stability, employment, income, okay? Uh, it includes neighborhoods and physical environment, housing, transportation, parks, playgrounds, walkability. We're also looking at education, literacy, language, early childhood, vocational training, and higher education. That's why the library was um, so important, um, that initiative, starting that conversation, bringing the community partners, bringing council in later um, to uh, push the initiative. And that's what I did as a visionary leader. I knew how important a library, a brand new library, um, will impact the 
the residents of our community. Also food insecurities. Um, we Thrive is very instrumental in doing pop-ups. We've been doing it for the last almost four years because we saw a need for access to uh, uh, food insecurities. Also looking at community and safety, looking at social integration. Um, since um, being on council, we are uh, really pushing for a common space for our residents, be it a multicultural center, be it a recreation center. And so that's very important for community engagement and for families who want to come into our community. Also, we're looking at violence and tra uh, trauma. We're looking at policing and social justice. And finally, my passion is health care giving our residents access to health care. And we've been having conversations with different partners to bring those providers into our community because families need access to health care. And that would improve their quality of life and basically um, put Forest Park in a position. Um, uh, it's a stretch, but um, right now we're the second largest city in Hamilton County, but we want to grow. Um, but we want to uh, make sure that our residents are happy, residents are retain our residents here in the Forest Park. Well, thank you. Okay, I'm getting this timer all ready for our next question. Hence all those little beeps you can hear. Mm -hmm. um, we're, while we're talking about families, mm -hmm. um, I want to bring up something I hear, I've heard at a couple meetings lately, council meetings, families come and say, is there something for youth? Mm -hmm. and, and this is kind of tied into what we talked about in the last question. Um, but what I'd love for you to answer with is um, kind of two parts. What do you already see right now in Forest Park for youth? Mm -hmm. um, and what do you want to see, what do you want to make happen in Forest Park for youth? Uh, we were kind of talking the bigger picture of families in a broader sense, mm -hmm. but specifically the stuff for the kids, whether they're elementary kids or teenagers. Um, and we are going to start with Mr. Harrison this time. Oh, thank you. So currently uh, for our youth, all I see is um, kids on the basketball courts or down off um, Sharon Road, maybe they're playing basketball or tennis or, or whatnot. Um, I see kids riding their bikes in the neighborhood. Um, and sometimes too, I see a lot of kids with a lot of idle time on their hands. Now, I'm not saying that they're out there causing any havoc or mischief or anything like that. But what I would like to see really would be a community space like it's been spoken of before, where these kids can congregate, where there can be somewhere where there's some oversight, um, where they can learn something. Like it was it said before, like maybe a trade, maybe a skill, uh, maybe a new hobby, right? Um, things that we used to have when I was coming up. Um, maybe a pool. Right, you know, just kids like to swim. My son likes to swim, but you have to take him outside of Forest Park to go swimming. Um, and you know, growing up, one thing we don't want, like I said, we do not want young people with a lot of idle time on their hands, right? Because bad things might and could happen. And I'm not saying that they're bad kids or anything like that, but really, we just want to get ahead of the curve and just provide those youth with something to do. Um, we talked about concerts earlier, you know, maybe have a youth concert, right? Um, or you can, you know, you get, you know, some type of uh, local artist to come and perform. Mm -hmm. um, but just really just have some type of event that's geared towards our youth from ages maybe 7 to 17. But really just to show them, like, hey, we're not that far removed from you. And we do care about what you, um, what, about your concerns. Okay. Thank you. Great. Got some more? What would you say to someone asking about what family events are there now? What mm -hmm. youth things are there now? And what youth things do you want to see come next? Okay. So um, we have several programs. Of course, COVID has put a, uh, a damper on some of our programs. But we have soccer. Um, we have football. Um, well, we have an um, organization that provides uh, a feeder system to our high school and our junior high. Um, we have baseball, we have basketball here in Forest Park. Um, we um, also, uh, we have um, our um, annual Harvest Fest, which is actually coming up October the 30th. And so that's a space for our, our young um, uh, residents to come out and um, uh, engage in the community. Um, we also, um, our um, Park and Rec, um, actually they're meeting today, um, uh, implementing more programs. Um, I know volunteerism is very important, and so we're always looking for volunteers 
um, to initiate programs. Um, like I said, being a resident here for 27 years, um, looking at um, a brotherhood program that I implemented several years ago, looking at sisterhood programs that were implemented. And so we do need volunteers to kind of spearhead these programs. We also have Girl Scouts that we partner with We Thrive. And so Girl Scouts are actively um, recruiting um, uh, for the Girl Scouts. Also, We Thrive. Um, we Thrive, we encourage um, youths to come out for fitness and we partner with the Woodenwood School District for a lot of our, our programming. Um, so do we need more programming? Yes. Um, and so I think that's something that we need to um, work on getting um, more um, um, improvement um, in that area. Also, um, the library. Um, one of the things when um, looking at the library, the maker space, that was, that was instrumental in um, getting that maker space into our community to um, have uh, our students have access to technology so they can be innovative. Um, and so um, um, those are just some of the things that we have already, but we do need more and more activities for our youth and especially our teenagers, who are, who's a very large population in our community. Also partner with Forest Chapel. Now they have a, um, a vision, uh, vi uh, village mentorship program and I sit on their board and so that should be rolling out in the next month for um, uh, children um, uh, sixth grade and under um, so um, um, they're also looking for mentors as well and so just partner with our faith-based community to provide um, programming for our, our uh, young adults. Excellent and I, I didn't give a time limit for this one okay, so I'll make sure we're, we mm -hmm. all have keeping track over here. Uh, Ms. Nuss Clark, what would, how would you answer that question? Uh, thank you so much. I'm um, pretty much, um, as Dr. Moore uh, Afer mentioned, with the existing programming that we have. Um, the problem is, is that we've got it somewhat of a marketing challenge because we've got some programs um, for ages K, K through eight, but people aren't un people aren't understanding that that's what we have or rather people don't know that so this is really a marketing issue this is about making sure how are we actually communicating with our um, with our residents we've just entered the space of, of social media I mean that's just recently done so we have got to look at how we build our infrastructure and our communication so that people understand hey this is a plethora of different opportunities that you have that are very affordable and a lot of times free for our residents but you can partake in that. So that's one of the things that we need to um, certainly work on and invest. Um, but we also even have a police cadet program. Uh, our police officers and our department has a wonderful um, organization that brings in those brings in those young folks and helps get them ready um, for hopefully a career in law enforcement. And that has been very successful. Um, we also see the a like situation when it comes to our um, fire and EMS. They have program and apprenticeships as well. Um, so I would love to see very intentional community space where certain things can happen. Um, be those um, large gatherings for youth and teenagers, um, maybe those are concerts or, um, or technology things or technology hubs, um, robotics, coding, STEM based things, that'd be great. Um, and, but a lot of this is going to also require working with and creating amping up existing partnerships but also creating new partnerships whether they're faith-based communities community or not because we've got plenty of businesses here in this city that have know-how and have skills that can lend themselves to doing all sorts of very interesting and unique um, things when it comes to our youth and having them available or even sponsoring those concerts that for families so that's one thing that we need to work with um, I know that my company partnered with um, Wenton Woods and the PTA doing STEM nights and we did build it with dad nights and um, those things are really special and I, I'm sure that uh, once COVID alleviates or moves on we can get back to doing a whole lot more of that. I think we could say that about a lot of things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, everything on our list mm -hmm. um, we just will be so glad when we mm -hmm. stop having questions that are impacted with a mm -hmm. but for COVID <laughs> answer. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to make sure we're we're coming down towards the end. Um, I actually have a lot more questions that I want to ask, but um, I'm going to stop because I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to give me a two-minute closing statement. Um, so we are going to start with Dr. Moore, and um, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that um, it's been a privilege uh, to serve, uh, privilege serving our community for the past four years. Um, 
I take great pride in our community and 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 um, and positioning us to progress um, in the future. Um, whether that being being active with the school district, I have a wonderful partnership with the school district. Um, I'm a trusted leader with the district. I have a um, commitment to the faith-based community uh, and businesses. And so I'm um, just trying to um, rebrand our community um, while on council. That um, is something that I'm always advocating for rebranding our community because currently we are the second largest I know we keep drilling that but that is that's a very uh, good position for our, our community um, and so communication is important um, been advocating for um, different ways to communicate to our residents and so it would be an honor um, if I was um, re-elected, um, I am also an endorsed candidate for um, the Hamilton County Democratic Party, and I take great pride in that endorsement. And um, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. Okay, here's, I'm gonna press this to start you, and go mm -hmm. ahead and you can give me your photo. Oh, thank you so much. Um, we are celebrating 60 years, the city of Forest Park. We were the first planned community and I am extremely proud of, um, of this community. We, you know, when um, years ago, 13 years ago, when we were looking at where to live and, and there were all sorts of options. <laughs> and I got so tired of seeing houses uh, on the other side of the, the highway. And uh, I really, really wanted to live here. It was an intentional decision because I knew there was so much more to this city than what other people, you know, especially outside of this city, really know. Forest Park is a gym. Um, we have a tr we have a walkable community. We have a place where you are safe. We have a um, school district that really works hard to make sure that they're integrating um, and that they are, you know, working with us in the community, in the city, and helping to strengthen the lives and the quality of life for our residents. Um, it's really important to be in a place like that, almost like a place where everybody knows your name. With that being said, we are also at a precipice. We are at a place where the decisions we make now are going to dictate the next 20 years and our vibrancy. So how the mall, Cincinnati Mills Mall, is going to be redeveloped and making sure that we are extremely intentional about what that looks like as an advantage to our city. And then the other pockets and entryways and arteries is going to be extremely important. I've taken great pride in um, you know, being able to serve uh, the citizens of Forest Park. I appreciate it, I love them, and I'm extremely responsive, and I work extremely hard. Um, as the only candidate endorsed by Hamilton County um, Democratic Party as well as the um, Cincinnati Women's Caucus, they look at the ability to get things done and they look at how you're engaging with your community. And they've given their mark of approval as I do hope the residents okay. of Forest Park will continue to do for another four years. And very quickly to make sure we get yours in, I wanna go ahead and hear yours. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I'd like to say it's an honor and privilege to be here, and also, too, um, I am going in as a write-in candidate, but I want you to remember, too, that as a son of Forest Park, that I am committed to the residents of Forest Park. When it came time for me to buy a house, I stayed in Forest Park. Um, I chose to raise a family in Forest Park. My kids are, um, one's a graduate of Wynton Woods High School. My son, he's in sixth grade at Wynton Woods um, uh, Primary School and whatnot. So, as somebody who's lived in Forest Park for over 38 years, I would just like to say that I am committed. Uh, I would be hardworking just in, and based on my, my, rec, my track record and my resume, I am committed. Right? I've been in the Army Reserves for over 32 years. I've been at my job for over six. And it's just really, I plan on staying until the job gets done. I would love to see uh, one day where, you know, where, where we have a waiting list for people who want to move to Forest Park. Why? Because of all the great things that could be done. And not to say that those things aren't happening, but those things are happening now. But really, I would just welcome your vote. I would just welcome your time. If you see me on the streets, let's talk about it. Let's see what um, we bring to the table. So once this election is said and done, we can put these, these um, things into place. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank each of you for joining me this evening. And I want to thank you for watching as well. That means you're going to be an informed voter when you go to the polls on November 2nd. 
If you need more information before you vote in the upcoming election, you can watch all of our election forum programs at www.waycross.tv. And you can also go to the Board of Elections website to make sure you are registered to look at a sample ballot and to find out where your voting location is. That's votehamiltoncountyohio.gov. Registration for this election ended October 4th. Early voting has already begun. Make sure you mark November 2nd on your calendar. Don't forget to vote. I'm Dana Gagnon, Waycross Government Programming Coordinator, and I will see you at the polls November 2nd.